What do you do when your 3D print fails? Spiky bits. Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from spikybits.com, and we're talking 3D printers again today. So it happened. I finally had uh, a print fail on my 3D printer, my Anycubic Photon uh, that Titanforge sent us. Thank you, Titanforge. <laughs> Shout out. Um, and you know, this was one of the things I was worried about because I hadn't seen a lot of content on what to do when your print fails. So I talked to Wyatt over at Jacket Club's Painting and he gave me a couple tips and you know, I kind of came up with some stuff on my own. And long story short, well, we just kind of figured it out. And it seems to have worked because this has actually happened once before. So, and I reset, had to reset the printer and get printed out good from go, uh, good to go from there. So what I'm going to show you is what to do when a print fails, how to clean your vat, your uh, printer head, your printer plate, whatever you want to call it. And then also how to go back and get some clues from your failed print. Uh, to figure out where you went wrong and how to fix it well maybe some points to fix it in your 3d printer i use cheeto box but of course uh, there's a whole bunch of other programs out there we're not going to get too in depth into that because i want that doing supports and keeping your prints from failing in the first place uh, to be the content of another video i have a whole series planned uh, to do because there's a lot of topics that are um, actually really hard to find out there as far as miniatures go when I was researching all the stuff and learning 3D printing myself, um, I, I would have liked to have seen some of this content. So I was like, you know what? Well, let's make this content. So here we go. What to do when your print fails. So at some point you're going to figure out in your build that something has gone wrong <laughs> and you need to either stop the print or try to salvage what's going on. Chances are you probably can't salvage it. You just need to hit the stop button or the, or the pause button. Um, and then your print bed is, or your print plate is gonna raise up and at that point, you'll be able to kind of try to figure out exactly how bad it is. So first things first, get on some gloves, get your protective eyewear on because it could get messy. You're gonna be working with a couple different chemicals here, probably to clean this up and reset your printer. Step one is to open up the printer, get out your build plate just to see how bad it is. Now, I, I already, pulled off my particular uh, print error on this one. Although I know I started printing new things, so I'm gonna to have to scrape that off of right there. It does have some resin on it, so you are gonna to wanna to dunk it. So I'm just gonna attach it to the rinse station and give it a whirl real quick. And while I look at the, the vat. Now for me, this is my normal workflow, but that doesn't mean that you just can't wipe it down and use your pickle jars and stuff if that's what you use, particularly if you don't have the wash station. This thing's actually pretty neat and uh, I really, enjoy uh, just kind of watching it power up and do its thing. So that's gonna be cleaning that off. And now we have to figure out what's going on with the vat because probably there's parts inside of the vat here, which is gonna be a problem. But also another problem is if it's really bad and the parts are sticking to the bottom here to your print film, then you're gonna to have to pull this out, remove it and reset the whole thing, which is kind of a pain in the butt. One of the easiest ways to tell if there's something in here is just take your little plastic uh, scraper and you can kind of run on the bottom of the print film right here and try to tell, like I feel some, I feel that there's something sticking right there. I can't tell exactly how thick it is, but chances are it'll mess with the light. So I'm probably just gonna wanna go ahead and just do a full reset, drain all of the resin out of here, put it back into uh, the bottle and, and start over and then re, re clean it all out and refill it, which would silence you. I know you're done. So that's, that's what we're going to do right here. So there's a nice, easy little tool you can get off of Amazon. That's uh, just a little nozzle here and a little strainer. So we're going to set that up to drain this back into our bottle. So I've loosened up my, uh, my vat here, my resin vat. I'm going to pull this out and I can already tell that it's kind of sticking to uh, the laser area down here or the light area and it looks like some resin has kind of gotten in there and of course it's hardened a little bit so we're gonna to have to clean that off we've got this and i don't know if you've noticed but there's a little notch right here which allows you to kind of uh, focus the pouring into here now once you set up your bottle this actually goes in a little ways and makes a nice uh, secure little setup here so if you bump it hopefully it doesn't kind of pull out so we're just going to strain it basically into 
uh, its own bottle of resin right there so there's no impurities or anything like that. I'm just going to sit here and let that kind of funnel down and keep at it to see what's on the bottom of this print film. Once you uh, empty out your vat right there, I'm going to be honest with you, if you know it's pretty much clean, you can probably just take the filter out and just kind of pour it in straight. I'm just going to cap this real quick so I don't accidentally spill any of my uh, my resin right there. So for the, take a look at your, your vat here uh, and the film underneath it. There isn't anything stuck to it. Now, if you do have a piece stuck to it, uh, that you know it's just basically the the print failed the supports failed and it's just kind of stuck to itself one thing I've noticed and you can do this you can pull this out with the liquid still in it is if you just gently tap from underneath it'll pop the piece in a lot of cases because it's under so much tension it'll just pop the piece and it, it'll come right up and you'll be able to scoop it out but obviously you're gonna have liquid in here so you want to be a little bit more careful also a thing you want to be careful of is getting uncured resin all over the back plate of this and therefore in your printer as well, which there is a little bit in here and I'm not exactly sure how it got in there, but I'm gonna have to clean that off. I'm gonna have to clean this off and I'm just gonna dunk it right right now into my little wash station right here, just to give it a good walk through or a, a good rinse off. And I'm gonna take some of my towels over here and just wipe it down real quick. Then to get in there and really clean off the surfaces, I'm just gonna use some alcohol prep pads. Now you could use the same thing with maybe a paper towel or a microfiber cloth or something like that. I just prefer these because they're all individually sealed, ready to go, they're about the size you need to just kind of get in there and wipe everything down. So I'm gonna wipe the back of my film uh, on, on my vat and then I'm also gonna wipe this whole area in here that, uh, that has a little bit of, un or of cured resin that's probably affecting the light and everything like that. After you get all your cleaning done uh, to your liking, of course, I had to spend a little extra time in here. It was pretty, uh, it was pretty caked on, unfortunately. You're gonna wanna grab your microfiber cloth and wipe down uh, both sides of your film right here so you don't have any you know, extraneous particles or anything in there. Paper towels are bad, but uh, this thing seems to do the job getting all that clear. I would also do it on uh, your uh, area in here where the laser and the light is your or lights gonna be coming up out of there just to keep everything clear Then you're gonna want to reassemble uh, your vat once you get your vat back in place You're just gonna want to fill it up with uh, some resin until wherever you feel comfortable and Get your print head back in place and then clear your part from uh, your print head or your print plate right here Remember make sure you use the plastic scraper that was included uh, with your printer most likely at least the one comes with any uh, any cubic foot photon right here Don't use a metal scraper because you can see where the gouges from a metal scraper actually will cut into the aluminum some now uh, you might see some other uh, Kind of uh, patterns in here, and that's just some really high grit um, Sandpaper I used so it would allow the prints to kind of stick to this uh, print head or print plate a little bit uh, easier in the future. So you can use a little like 800, 1000 grit sandpaper just to kind of rough it up a bit, but putting gouges in it from a metal scraper probably isn't a good idea. I don't at least feel comfortable with it. So I'm going to give this a quick wipe down and then put it back into place right here and we should be good to go. All right. So now it's time to figure out what the heck happened to make your print actually fail. So here's our print that failed. Now, I should have my gloves on still. This is a little gummy, but I cleaned it up as best I could with isopropyl just so I could kind of hold it here and work the computer a little bit. So I can already tell that there was some sort of event that sheared off the supports across here. I'm not exactly sure what that was. Perhaps uh, something just kind of fell, but it doesn't look like that was the case right here. So it looks like this one was all printing uh, just fine. Actually, all of this printed. This one actually printed fine. For some reason, this just stopped right here. So maybe there was a buildup and the light couldn't penetrate, so it actually stopped kind of building up right here, which might have been an issue all the way across here. But I can tell right here that this actually separated down in here at some point and reattached itself because of gravity. So I don't know, it looks like it was attached and then this all got printed. So after some time, this detached itself and then locked in right here. Now I did clean up a bit of a mess over on this side, so on the vat. So I feel like this might have been um, covering it up and that's why that stopped and then there might have been some dribble in there so we kind of start to piece it together this side was fine and this was fine right here except for these struts so 
once you start looking at your prints, you can kind of tell why it failed. It looks like structural integrity. The supports broke off here. Something happened right here. I don't exactly know what. I imagine something to do with supports uh, on the side here. Because remember, this actually supports this. So we're going to go take a look at the, the actual files themselves now and try to figure out exactly what happened. So here is our walker body that you can see. And you definitely can tell that something happened because remember this piece was, or this piece was all separated up in here and it wasn't right. Um, but I can already tell looking at the file that I messed up and there's probably some islands got created right here. And this little, this teeny little, there should have been some supports right here for sure. It looks like there should have been some supports right here. So a good way to check that, you can run it through the photon validator and we're not, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that right here, but you can definitely put that through the photon validator. But we can take a look at just kind of going up through the layer so you can see right there, there is a layer that's gonna create an island because there's no supports. There's no supports over here. So that's probably what started that cascading action of uh, everything starting to separate. So I'm just gonna kind of fast forward here. And it looks like there's a cavern in here that I didn't have. Uh, it looks like it was okay. It didn't really need to super be supported, but I will take a look at that a little closer because I don't like having a little something in there that was supported. I did this the supports on this file before I kind of knew exactly what I was doing when it comes to supports and how they all work. So chances are I didn't save it as a, uh, unfortunately I didn't save it as a uh, project. So I'm gonna have to start over unfortunately, which really uh, kind of is very unfortunate. So you can kind of see a lot of what happened. And on this side here, it doesn't look like there was a failure over here. Those supports just got sheared off because of maybe something was stuck. So that side looks okay. It looks like we're just having the issues down underneath here where we should have had more supports and everything. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to spend some more time on this particular piece right here, tighten it up and then try to reprint it. So unfortunately, sometimes those things happen and you have a failure, you have to clean out your vat. You might have to clean it out, you might not, but you're definitely gonna have to at least fish some parts out of there. It, it's some downtime, but it's manageable as long as you practice, you know, some really good cleaning techniques, use your alcohols where, where possible and, you know, just get in there and get it, uh, get it cleaned up as much as possible. And then learn from your mistakes, learn from your supports and what you might have failed at, kind of like what I did with at least uh, the cockpit uh, to that walker from uh, Titan Forge and just move forward and, and, you know, just work on it some more. You can do auto supports. There's a whole lot of tricks out there and we're gonna do a whole different video on uh, like auto supports and custom supports and all sorts of different things on that. So stay tuned for that. I just had a print failure. So I was like, hey, this is a perfect opportunity to record some great content for you guys to show you what to do when you have a print failure, what causes the print failures, and then how to move forward for there. So thank you very much for watching this. Make sure you check out Titan Forge over on Patreon because they have a ridiculous amount of 3D files and are all very well done. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other designers over there too, but we work very closely with Titan Forge, of course. And uh, you know, I can't say enough good things about them. Love their Kickstarter from back in the day. So check them out. Thank you very much for watching. Hit that subscribe button and be sure to turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos.